Hello YouTube friends. On the agenda for today is to take this freezer, um, 5 cubic foot freezer that we have um, purchased recently and to turn it into a refrigerator. I know it's kind of cold out here, um, so you see my breath today, but inside it gets really hot and the refrigerator we have is um, having a hard time keeping things cool for a good energy rate with the wood stove running all the time. So I'll go in there and I'll show you what I mean and uh, we'll get at it. All right, so this is the fridge we've had for a while. It is directly in front of the wood stove, which puts off a lot of heat. We placed these pink foam boards on here hoping to deflect a lot of it, but um, unfortunately I wasn't aware of how these things work. And after working or using it for a year, I, I know how now, so I know where I messed up. But the heat in these things, the coils, are kind of in the side here. The, the, the heat exchanging coils are not in the back like the old kind. Um, they're in the side right next to the metal. And what happens is when the fridge runs, this metal actually heats up. And the problem is, is when we run the stove all day, this metal is already warm. And so the fridge has to run quite a bit then to actually keep the inside cold, okay? And so it's using a lot of energy. The other problem we've run into is that this fridge, like most modern fridges, uh, has an automatic defrost on it. So anytime that the moisture level inside gets too high, the fridge actually heats itself up on the inside and then runs a bunch of air through to try and get that moisture out. And that takes a lot of energy when you're on solar. And so we've actually ran our batteries dead a couple of times already over the last year when this thing was simply trying to do an automatic defrost and then we just have no control over that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that freezer that we bought, that chest freezer. We're going to take this fridge out. We're going to take off the stand here. And we're going to set the chest freezer in place. But before we do that, we're going to have to take out the thermostat and put in a new thermostat regulator that's made for a refrigerator. And so we'll go through that and we'll get her done. One nice thing about these new freezers and refrigerators is they're really light. Okay, so let's unbox it. All right, so one interesting thing to note also is how efficient these chest freezers really are. Our refrigerator, which is a little bit bigger than this, I think it's an eight and a half cubic feet, was something like $230 a year to run average. Um, and this is only $26 a year. So just to give you the comparison of how much energy less this uses, and that's to keep things frozen. We're not actually gonna have it that cold in here. We're gonna have it up around between 35 and 40 degrees. So this should be way more efficient than our current refrigerator. And we do have the chest freezer as a freezer in the basement as well. So we no longer need the freezer on the top of the refrigerator freezer combination that we are currently getting rid of. Similar. Hey. 
All right, so we're gonna stop and take a picture of this. So remember which ones go where. Actually, what I might do, I might just do this. Oh, they're in different places anyways. Is there a T on here? Or H, see there's an A, you see the H right there? Just, just next to my finger there's an H up here and there's an H here. Green goes to H. What does that look like to you? A C? Or an O. All the choices are C or not C. <laughs> Two pair of pliers. So C and L, so that was C, and then I'm guessing this one is L somewhere by it. Yeah, there's an L in there. Can you see it right next to the, right in there, there's an L. It's upside down right now, but. Okay, those are all done. Now we just need to disconnect this. Which this, I believe, they pull out. Okay. There's a nut in there. And that's why they gave us a new nut. The new one. And then this one is literally going to go just like this. There should be a, yep, so there's a little, there's a little hole here in a slot. And then there's a pin here that needs to go in that slot. Just like that. Put on the new nut. Or we use the old nut, probably doesn't matter. get it snug so it doesn't come loose when we turn the dial okay and then this should fit on only one way so it's cut off there in half so it looks like about right here okay and it doesn't line up <laughs> of course I mean this 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 indicator here isn't made for this dial or that thermostat and then now we need to trace back the sensing wire here with the probe we need to pull it out and then we need to push this new one in so that's going to be what's next all right so here's the old thermostat um with settings for the refrigerator for the freezer right so it's a deep freezer and here's the sensor at the end and now we need to shove in the probe for the new sensor. And I know I can only shove it in this far. And there's they even got red tape on there for the original manufacturers, the workers, to know how far to push it in. So I'm going to see how far that is in this one. I'll put a little bend there as well so I can know I'm not pushing it in too far. Okay, I'm gonna try and leave this coiled up like this so it sits in here nicely when I'm done. But that's, I think, about how far I wanna push it in. So let's slide this all through here and we'll get it turned around.
can make it fairly straight. And here we go. And in we go to that bend. And click this back in. And then I want to get this so that we're not touching the motor components anywhere because this will vibrate. It's mounted on rubber. It will vibrate. So I'm going to get this kind of folded out of the way as much as possible. Just like that. And close her back up. And when we turn her on now, it should work as a refrigerator with the new thermostat set to the appropriate temperature settings above freezing, just above freezing. And the old thermostat was a freezer thermostat set to freezing temperatures below freezing. And so I could save this at any point. I could turn this back to a deep freeze um, if that's what we needed. Or I could put this in something else and turn it into a deep freeze. Or if the one on our deep freeze broke, I could replace it. So this is something to hang on to. Whenever you use power tools on something small like this, be really careful because if you just overdo it with the screw gun, you're going to strip out your screws really easily. I know most of you all know that, but just go really slow and gentle. All right, when it gets there, just stop because otherwise you're going to strip them out. It's just um, threads that have been drilled into sheet metal, so it's really not, not going to hold anything. Let me get that started and get out of the way. Oh, my arm's in the way again. Okay, yep, just like that. Don't squeeze the trigger all the way. You'll definitely just pull right through those sheet metal threads. When it gets there, just stop. And if you think it needs a little more, go back with a hand screwdriver at that point. Mm -hmm. But this is still certainly way easier and faster than using a hand screwdriver for the entire thing. You can save your wrist muscles a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we put the fridge up here. We raised the refrigerator because it's much easier for me to get into at this height. I can see what's on the bottom and patients can still just barely get into the freezer. Um, another thing that's an issue with these freezers is the temperature control for the freezer isn't independent of the fridge. In order to make the freezer colder, you have to actually make the fridge colder and vice versa. And so we're running into issues with that. Um, when the cabin, we get down around freezing temperatures, stuff in the freezer would thaw and stuff in the fridge would freeze and just weird things were happening um, when we had to leave the cabin and try and leave this running. So this fridge is not working for us off grid and in a situation where we're heating with wood and having to leave the cabin, um, it, it just, we could not leave this on. It would cause lots of issues and we would lose lots of food. So having a freezer designated as a chest freezer in the basement and having a refrigerator as a chest refri refrigerator designated up here and keeping the two separate, we'll be able to keep them okay each way except the only thing is when we leave the refrigerator up here still could freeze because it is not in the cellar but that's okay all right so we got the cord try and wiggle it out a little bit first
Okay, so we have a thermometer right here that we're using in our refrigerator refreezer to see what the freezer was getting at. We're going to stick it in here just to make sure that this doesn't go too cold. Um, it, it's quite possible they sent us the wrong therm thermostat. And this way we can know that our food is okay, um, even though we may not be keeping that close to an eye. We don't want it to freeze and we want it to be cold enough. So we're just going to stick it in here and then we can always go ahead and read it. So that's the refrigerator. This is a chest refrigerator now. And um, it's going to stay below all of the heat from the stove. It's not going to be affected at all. And when we open it, all of the cold air can't come out. It's just going to stay in there. Okay, so we've had our chest refrigerator in the cabin for almost two weeks now. And Steve is really happy with how efficient it is. Um, it has been uh, kind of interesting getting used to using a refrigerator this style versus a traditional style refrigerator. But um, it's been working out okay. Um, inside the freezer, we have the typical um, freezer basket that we can lift out and um, get get underneath it really well, slide it back and forth if we need to to get, get to stuff. Um, so overall, it's been working out great for us and, um, you know, just have to get used to using something different. So for now, that's that.